How you doing, folks? Vidal Super Ninja here, and we are back. Today's episode, we're picking up right where we left off last time, doing our little countdown of my top 30 video games of all time, my personal favorite choices. And we're going to pick up right where we left off at number 27. Quick public service announcement, there's been a little change in the format of the show. Instead of covering three games per episode, I've decided to do one game at a time. This will really cut down the editing time for me and get these episodes to you guys in a much faster manner. So without further ado, we're going to be getting right into this one. But first... Let's get to it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, long before Disney and EA. Before the dark times, before the Empire. Existed a time of peace and prosperity in the galaxy. A time when Star Wars fans of the old and the new came together to celebrate the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is not to be confused with the release of EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2 in 2017. Though that did turn into a great game in its own right, that is a story for another day. Today we're talking about Pandemic Studios Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005. A game in my opinion ranks among the very best of the Star Wars games that were ever made. This game truly captured the magic and epic feel of the massive battles that have taken place throughout the Star Wars universe timing of its release could not have been better. 2005 saw the epic conclusion of the Clone Wars animated series. Now if you've never seen these and you're a Star Wars fan, I highly suggest checking them out. Even if you aren't a fan of Star Wars but happen to be a fan of animation, I seriously cannot recommend this enough. It is action packed and the animation is top notch. I'll be doing a more thorough review of the series in a future episode, most likely under Gamepedia so stay tuned for that. As the title suggests, it takes place during the Clone Wars, following the events of Attack of the Clones, with the events leading right into George Lucas's final Star Wars movie masterpiece in Revenge of the Sith. And later topping off the year with this game, it truly was one of the greatest times to be a Star Wars fan. That took my love for the franchise to a whole different level, and I don't think i felt this way towards a movie series since. I simply couldn't get enough of it. Felt like everyone I knew was getting caught up in the Star Wars hype. It was on my mind all the time. So much so that me and my friends spent months preparing and training for our own Star Wars fan film series. spent hours working on saber duels and fight choreography. Though my dreams and aspirations to tell stories and direct, sci-fi and martial arts action movies started much earlier in life. It was during this time that these ambitions started to take real form. Though my first experiences as a director ended in failure, ultimately I learned that this is truly what I wanted to do. What I'd been meant to do. And I can thank George Lucas and his beautiful expanded universe games like Battlefront 2 for igniting this fire within me.
It is a shame that we didn't have YouTube or cell phone cameras the way we do today. I honestly believe with the right resources we could have created something really special. Playing this with my friends in multiplayer has to be among the very best of my experiences and memories playing video games. It was around the first time we were capable of having LAN parties at my house, so we were able to connect multiple TVs to multiple systems and everyone was able to play all at the same time. It was freaking chaos but so much fun. It was obvious they wanted this to be the biggest Star Wars game to date. This game had it all. Solid graphics for the time, fun and addictive gameplay, and fan service. The game was just jam-packed with content. Over 30 different maps. Space battles were massive and so well done. Truly, this has to be one of the highlights of the game. There was nothing cooler than being inside the safety of a friendly ship, going to a space hangar and selecting between a variety of fighter and interceptor class ships. X-Wings, A-Wings, Jedi Starfighters, Droid Starfighters. Personal note, TIE Interceptor is my absolute favorite ship, and it's well represented here. Noticeably absent is the Millennium Falcon, Slave One, the B-Wing, the Naboo Starfighter, and even the earlier Jedi Starfighter designs. But there are still plenty of options here to choose from. Bombers, shuttle and transporter dropships, and heavily armed gunships round out the impressive roster of vehicles to choose from. Many of these can hold several pilots and gunners at once. Each can take control and operate different guns, functions, and turrets on the ship. This is especially fun during multiplayer. Blasting off into space and getting into massive dogfights, dodging swarms of enemy fighters, deflecting and pushing through turbo laser fire, breaching and storming enemy ships to wreak havoc with them. Here you can either capture and use the enemy resources to your advantage, or go in there and blow everything the f up until you cause as much damage as possible. Not enough can be said about just how cool this experience is, and it's a real shame we haven't seen a return of this prominent feature in any of the recent Star Wars games. Perhaps one day we'll actually get a Battlefront 3 and soon rectify this. If Disney and EA wanted to make a lot of guaranteed money, they would remake this game. Tweak a few things here and there and add some improvements. Throw on a fresh coat of paint with those pretty modern graphics. Shit, you could even add all your stupid sequel trilogy and TV show characters. Really just go all out and have fun with it. Go nuts. Go as deep as possible into Star Wars' 40 plus years of lore. Give us the ultimate Star Wars game. Just imagine the inclusion of characters like Starkiller. Just leave out the freaking microtransaction and loot boxes, and you've got yourself a surefire hit. Alternatively, you could officially release the cleaned up version of Star Wars Battlefront 3. Many of us were waiting for this game, but it was never meant to be. But I'm sure releasing it today would be like digging into a gold mine. While I don't necessarily think this is the very best Star Wars game, that honor might go to Knights of the Old Republic. It's definitely one of the very best multiplayer experiences you could have in that galaxy so far, far away. So what did you guys think of my look at Star Wars Battlefront 2? Please share with me if you have any kind of fond memories of this game. Honestly, I just love talking over things like this. 
and there's still plenty of details I left out regarding the many layers of this game. But for sure, I'll be covering this in a future episode of Gamerpedia, which will have me playing every single Star Wars game that has ever been released. And I'll be sharing my thoughts about all of them. So if you're a fan of the series, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, share, subscribe, anything to help the channel out. For now, this is Vidal Super Ninja, signing out. Next time with Vidal Super Ninja. taking a close look at one of the gems of the PlayStation 1 JRPG Golden Age. Legend of Lagaya.